Seth Lakeman, welcome to Australian Musician. Uh, you're touring Australia at the moment. Uh, just yeah. uh, played a gig at Blues Fest. How was that? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it's a show I've done before actually, but not in the same uh, size as we pretty much headlined Blues Fest, and uh, you know the size of crowd, twenty thousand people probably there, and right at the end of the night, ten o'clock spot. Um, and it was, you know, it's quite a buzz actually. It's really exciting. So yeah. great thing to do. I've done it on my own and with the band, and I've done it two or three times before, but much smaller tents. So it was great to do the, you know, the big tent. Yeah. Well, let's go back a little way. You play music with with your brothers. You actually recorded with them and performed. But what are your earliest memories of growing up and hearing music? Um, I guess, well, my parents used to run a folk club, so that's, that's their background. And we were brought up um, performing, listening every week um, to artists who were coming through, passing through. So the likes of Richard Thompson and Martin Carthy and Dave Swarbrick and some great, you know, great musicians, writers and artists, you know, who were, who were there and you were kind of learning off and just enjoying, really. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was the early part of our up until you know early teenager years, uh, that's what we were doing. And then after that, we we had pretty much uh, worked out that we wanted to play music. You know, not necessarily professionally, but you know, a lot of the time when you're younger. So we we started playing with each other. You know, in terms of a, a, a trio, there were two brothers as well as me. So we called the Leighton Brothers, and and that's you know that's how it all kind of uh, all started really. Yeah. You play many instruments. What was the first one that you learned? Uh, it's the fiddle, the violin. Yeah, yeah that's right. My, my main one. Yeah. And your music heroes, Corey, Who who did you learn from? Uh, There's a guy called Tom McConville who taught me lots. I mean, the fiddle and singing thing. That's really his area. There's not many people who do it, but he was a guy I I, I was quite influenced by. He's a Geordie fiddle player. Um, and then other wonderful artists like Mark O'Connor, Stefan Grappelli, um, uh, Johnny Ponty, you know, all sorts of great, Frankie Gavin, No Doubt Casey, you know, lots of great Irish, Scottish, Ali Bang, you know, great fiddle players. Yeah. yeah. Um, fast forward to now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and your current album, you've had many albums, but the current one is uh, Ballads of the Broken Few. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um, which features Wildwood Kin, a three-piece uh, vocal group. Yeah. How did you come across those ladies? Just in a charity um, show that I was part of uh, around Dartmoor, where I live. Uh, heard their voices, immediately struck by, you know, the way they worked, sibling harmonies, you know, the, the, the closeness of those harmonies is quite... It's a very special thing, a magical thing to hear. So um, I was looking... I'd pretty much written most of that record and I was looking for a string quartet, but I suddenly thought maybe we could get some of those harmonies with voices. So, and then the whole thing blossomed and I spoke to a friend of mine, Ethan Johns, a great producer, and we, we all kind of got together and made this record. Yeah. Uh, you seem to be fascinated by people's stories and, and history. Where does that curiosity come from? Probably the background of where I live for a start, but my family, my, my, both my parents are writers uh, father's journalist, collecting stories for 40 years for the Daily Mirror. So that's his background. So I, I think that's a big part of it, yeah. yeah. What's more important to you, stories or sounds? Well, uh, I think it depends on the record, really. You know, if it was something like a record that I was working on four or five years ago, word of mouth, people's stories. You know, it was the stories, not the sounds, that really were, were important. But, um, you know, certainly on that last record, uh, Ballads of the Broken Few, probably sounds. You know, not necessarily stories so much. There's more sentiment there, I would say. Um, and sound is a big part. That sonic rawness of, of energy between four voices. I mean, that's kind of what we were looking for. So sound was a big part of that. And the next record that we've recorded already is more of a kind of... It's a sound thing again, but with stories included. But it's far more kind of heavy as a folk rock thing. You know, I guess inspired a little bit by the recent work with the guys in the band here and, and, and the Robert stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's already recorded? Right? Yeah, I did it in January, yeah, six days uh, in this cold, dark studio on the edge of Dartmoor, uh, recorded everything live, vocals live, it's quite a vintage type record uh, and hopefully get some mixes back when we get home and it's, yeah, it's, it'll be there, yeah. 
Is there an overall theme lyrically to this one? I don't know, not really, no. It's more the sound of, of the way these four musicians are playing off each other. So there's quite a heavy drummer involved and there's certain, you know, there's, there's a great, um, almost um, Neil Young type Strat guitarist, you know, who's, who's, who's in there. More like a Richard Thompson, actually. He's got, you know, the way he works, but he's probably a bit more far out than Richard Thompson. Uh, he's an amazing player, young guy, you know, so it's this sort of discovery, a bit like a Wild Kin discovery that I heard him play and thought, wow, this guy is amazing. He's 28 and he's ready to explode. <laughs> and he did on the record, yeah, yeah. And did you so, use a different producer this time? Yeah, we used a guy called Ben Hillier, who's, uh, he's definitely a bit far out as well. <laughs> he's, I mean, more electro stuff like Depeche Mode, he did a record with Blur. And, He's done all sorts. He's more rock, actually, rock and electro. He's done some, yeah, so had no idea about folk music. So it was interesting. He got some great drum sounds. I mean, that's, you know, when you're working with a heavy drummer, it's, that's the kind of foundation, the roots of it all. So you want to get that right, and the rest can hopefully, you know, it can find its, uh, find its place. Yeah. Uh, you're currently touring Australia with Robert Plant. Um, it seems to me that that all came out of the blue, pretty much, the... Yeah, the recording and the tour. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, it was totally out of the blue. Um, called me up just after New Year's, um, and yeah, just invited me to come and play on his record. That was the idea. Try out a few tracks at Real World Studios in Bath. So I did uh, travel up there, um, and it was an amazing experience. Just a whirlwind. Within three hours, they had me playing on lots and lots of different things, and then. Uh, that was it. I went back, and then a month or two later, I had the call to come out on the road. Um, and then, yeah, and here I am, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, and that was maybe a year ago now. I don't know. Yeah, it all seems like a whirlwind, really. <laughs> yeah. Did Robert give you much of a brief in regard to your part in the album? Uh, did you have much creative freedom? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just play, play what you like, really, what you feel, yeah. Uh, it's definitely dictated where they would like those kind of, um, those flurries of melodic kind of uh, wildness, uh, which is what I'm offering, I guess, to this project. Uh, it's definitely dictated to where that might happen, but uh, in terms of what you're playing, yeah, I think you can kind of, you know, I've written all those parts, yeah. Everything, so. Yeah, and how how are you coping with uh, being the support act and then playing in the band? You're on stage for quite a while. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Yeah, and I've brought the family over here to Australia. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, it's multitasking. It's a busy day, pretty knackered at the end of it, but um, it's all worth it. It's great though. I mean, it's a huge you know opportunity for me you know to be playing the songs and you know these stories from back home to to lots of people who, who wouldn't otherwise hear them so it's brilliant yeah. yeah what instruments have you brought out with you on this tour what have i got i've got electric tenor uh i've got a bazooki i've got my uh viola violin yeah yeah and do you utilize a, a tech on the road or do you have to tune everything yourself no i do everything myself <laughs> Uh, sometimes that's better because you know, you know, you know what you've you, you've got in store. You know your own tools, don't you? Yeah. Do you come across tuning issues with those types of instruments? Oh yeah, yeah, often. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always in in the you know the, the RP gig, Robert gig. I'm tuning lots and lots. Yeah, yeah. I run off quite a lot into bathrooms and wherever you know, just with a chromatic tuner tuning away. Yeah. Because yeah. they're they're quite yeah they're, they're they're difficult to level out actually, and and I guess the heat humidity, all that sort of stuff does throw, certainly violas and violins, they're, they're probably the most sensitive instruments, aren't they? They're all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah. how are you actually amplifying those in instruments on stage? Well, it's nothing really. I'm, I mean, this is the thing. I thought I'd be going in there and, you know, I'm playing with a full-on rock band without any in-ear monitoring or anything like that. I'm literally just playing a fiddle with a bit of reverb. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm doing the whole gig. I thought I might have loads of pedals and... But I didn't, but it's not something I do, so I just kind of create weird sounds out of it anyway. So there's no, people are surprised by that. And I'm surprised <laughs> myself actually that I can, act, I can actually get above some of, you know, some of that sound, which yeah. is tricky. Yeah. Uh, I saw a recent YouTube clip and you had a, a series of Vox amps behind you. Well, yeah, I know, it's a was, whole stack. Was that cosmetic? <laughs> Are we actually playing through those? Oh no, there's no, I'm not playing through anything. No, nothing yeah. like that. It's literally just straight through LR bags. 
uh, and they got a reverb at the front, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Are you one of those musicians who's constantly looking for interesting new instruments? Yeah, instruments. I guess pedals aren't. I'm new to pedals. I don't really. I like to create sounds from the actual instrument themselves. So I'm more that sort of person. Uh, but yeah, I'm always buying instruments. I have to stop myself, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. Do you have a, a large bucket list of things that you want to achieve? Um, well, I mean, you know, it's, I'm on to my ninth, almost ninth. I think it'll be my ninth solo record. Never thought I'd be doing something like this as well. I never, you know, it's all, it's, you know, definitely taken over from anything I would have dreamt or expected, you know, as a fiddle player from Dartmoor, you know, that's basically what I do. Songwriter, fiddle player, you know, singing songs about, you know, people up and, and a place that I really am passionate about. Um, but I think, you know, it's in terms of what I would like to achieve, my ambitions, you know, I just enjoy making music and experimenting as I go and just trying to, um, trying to be honest with, with the sound you're making at that time. So, I like to keep things moving. I mean, that's definitely something I like to do. I like to, you know, push myself, and I enjoy the process of songwriting. So, it's almost therapeutic sometimes, in a way. Yeah. So once this tour finishes, um, what happens then? Well, uh, we go home. <laughs> then there's some shows again with Robert, just in the UK, and then it's back out to America in June, for another month. So, uh, and then to Europe for two and a half weeks, um, all over Europe uh, with Robert. And then August is off, thankfully, with the family. And then, um, and then I'll have a record coming out in September, so we'll have to wait and see, yeah. 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 Right, Seth Lakeman, thanks for your time. No, thank you. No, it's great to talk to you, yeah.